All right, class, so this is a limiting reactant problem, and this is a very common type problem. There's a lot of different aspects to this problem, so I'm gonna take my time uh, and walk you through them. And at the end, part C, part C is a little bit more of a complicated um, wrinkle to the problem that, that you might see from time to time. So let's get, go ahead and get started. Um, in this problem, we're given a balanced chemical equation, so two moles of NH3 react with one mole of CO2 to give us one mole of this product and then one mole of water. We're also given starting quantities of our two reagents. So I've got 637.2 grams of NH3 and 1,142 grams of CO2. And the first question says, what is the limiting reagent? And a little hint here says, find the moles of each first. So the limiting reagent, that's gonna be the reason that runs out first. And really to, to figure that out, we need to use these multiple ratios, but we also need to work in moles. And that's why it says, you know, find the moles of each first. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I have 637.2 grams of NH3, and I wanna convert that into moles of NH3, then I'm gonna use the molecular mass of NH3, so 17.03, that's the grams per mole for NH3, can cancel my, my units of grams, and I'll be left with 37.4 moles of NH3. For CO2, again, I'm gonna convert 1,142 grams of CO2 into moles of CO2, and that gives me 25.9 moles of CO2. At this point, we might look at these and we might say, well, I've got less moles of CO2. Does that mean it's a limiting reactant? No, okay, really common mistake. But what we really need to do now is say, okay, let's go back to our multiple ratios. Let's go back to the stoichiometry of this problem. For every two moles of NH3, it only takes one mole of CO2 to run this reaction. So even though I have less moles of CO2, well, it might not be the limiting reactant if I run out of NH3 first. Remember that the limiting reactant is the reactant that's gonna run out first. So in order to figure this part out, what I like to do is sort of use this number of reactions method. And again, there are other ways to do this. Some are a little bit more straightforward, um, but this, this is, a, I think, a good starter method. So the number of reactions method, I'm gonna say, well, for every reaction, one reaction will be what I have written here. How many moles of NH3 does it take to do one reaction? It takes two moles. My units of moles of NH3 will cancel out and I will be able to sort of figure out that given these conditions, I can do 18.7 reactions, right? I can do this, this reaction 18.7 times. I'll do the same thing for CO2. Now in this case, every one reaction only takes one mole of CO2. So I can do 25.9 reactions with this given amount of CO2. So hopefully you can see that in fact, this 37.4, this is my limiting reactant. My 37.4 moles of NH3, that's gonna be what limits the formation of product in this case, because I can do only do 18.7 reactions versus the 25.9 reactions that I could do with CO2. So, the next part of this question, the mass of CO2 of product that would be formed, you know, finding that, that quantity, we're gonna use this moles of limiting reactant. This whole other bit, number of reactions, we can sort of forget about that for now. The whole purpose of this was just for us to figure out what the limiting reactant was, now that we've figured it out, then we're gonna use that moles of limiting reactant to do the rest of the problem. So now I can say, well, 37.4 moles of NH3, that's gonna be, again, my limiting reactant. How much product can I make with this limiting reactant? And I'm gonna use the multiple ratio. So the multiple ratio here is gonna be one to two. For every one mole of product, it takes me two moles of NH3, right? So two moles here gives us one mole of product. So I'm gonna use this multiple ratio. My moles of NH3 will cancel. And then I will find that I can form 18.7 moles of my product. You might notice that it's a similar number, right? 
Um, that's just going to happen sometimes with these multiple ratios being what they are. Shouldn't freak you out or anything like that. The last step here is to convert from moles into grams. So I've got my quantity of product, 18.7 moles of NH2 to CO. And I'm going to convert that into grams. If I add all of this up, find the molecular mass, I got 60.05 grams per one mole. Units of moles will cancel. And I'll be left with 1,120 grams of my product. Okay. One thing I, I am noticing right now is that I've got four sig figs in each of these. So really I should have four sig figs in my answer. And I think I rounded this to three sig figs. So I think if you had an answer of 1,122 or 23 grams, um, that's probably actually better than my answer. But I would accept this. I think it's, it's totally reasonable. Okay. The last part here. So the last part, the mass of excess reagent that will be left over. And I'm not giving you any hints on this one. So the question here is... CO2 is my excess reagent. I'm going to have extra CO2, and I want to know how much extra I'm going to have. So really this question is asking, how much CO2 did I use, right? Because if I know how much I used, then I can subtract that from how much I started with, and that'll be the amount that's excess, okay? So if I take 37.4 moles of NH3, And I multiply that by my mole ratio of one mole CO2 over two moles of NH3. That's going to be able to tell me how many moles of CO2 I use in this reaction, right? So this is my limiting reagent, moles of NH3. My multiple ratio for every, go back up here, for every two moles of NH3, it takes one mole of CO2. So my multiple ratio here of one to two, that comes from my balanced chemical equation. So this tells me I'm gonna use, again, that 18.7 moles of CO2 will be used. So if I go back up here, I know that I started with 25.9 moles. So the excess moles is gonna be 25.9 minus 18.7 moles that's going to be 7.2 moles of CO2 that is left over, okay? The last thing, if I want to find the mass, I'm just going to convert 7.2 moles of CO2 into grams. 44.01 grams over one mole equals 317 grams of CO2 that will be left over. Again, there's a number of ways that we can do this problem, so other methods that you can use, but this would be um, you know, a totally valid answer uh, for this problem.